Um, when I left the CIA, I spent about five years helping build a cybersecurity company. We did penetration testing, technical vulnerability assessments, and I would always offer my clients, a lot of times we worked with banks, um, and I'd offer my clients the option of, you know, you pay our, you pay our fee or we get to keep what we take. Nobody took us up on the last one because we never not got in. Um, so the, the, the tools, the, techni the, the technical capabilities are out there. Um, you know, that's something that having a conversation about how do we get the right tools um, and expertise to, to law enforcement um, may be a conversation that, we're, we're, that may be a positive thing that comes from this, from this, um, this conversation. Um, Mr. Connolly, last question for you, sir, or sets of questions. Um, in the upskirting example, are there upskirters in Boston that haven't been caught because they've used encryption? Well, this encryp encryption technology is ne nearly brand new. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not aware of any cases yet. Um, you know, when we caught in an upskirter in, in Massachusetts, um, we, we realized actually there was no statute that made it a crime. So the Massachusetts legislature quickly took up this issue and made it a crime. Um, meteoric. As, as, as it should be. As it as, should as be. It should be. Um, um, and, and also to you, I, I appreciate your work and what you do. You know, I, I spent um, nine years as an undercover officer um, overseas um, collecting intelligence on threats to the homeland. I collected that intelligence to help law enforcement and help folks like you and your colleagues uh, put these bad guys away. Um, you're at, you do this at a threat to your own life. You do this as a threat um, to your family. And, you know, I thank you for that. Um, but I also, you know, because of the role you play and the importance you play, I actually hold y'all up to a higher standard um, as well. And I'm always proud um, to stand side by side with y'all. Uh, Ms. Hess, question for you. What is the FBI asking for? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I would say that uh, certainly uh, what we're asking for first and foremost is exactly what we're doing here today and just the opportunity for the American public to consider these issues and to weigh the risks because clearly we recognize that there is no absolute security, again, in either the physical or the digital world. Everything may present a vulnerability. There may already be vulnerabilities in place but for law enforcement to not have the ability to accept or to receive the information that we might need in order to hold those accountable who conduct heinous crimes or who will conduct terrorist attacks, that's the question that I think we need to balance in the American public. And just by having that conversation will help us, I think, to make better informed decisions. Thank you. And this has, and does the FBI have any um, information or data to suggest that the inherent vulnerabilities that have been discussed about dual encryption is that there's a way to do it? We certainly believe and, and share Mr. Connolly's uh, um, hope that there is some type of innovative solutions out there that uh, we might be able to I uh, see government and industry work together to come up with, certainly they won't be bulletproof, as has been said earlier, but certainly more secure ways of being able to get law enforcement what it needs, yet at the same time provide layers and layers and layers of security so that the providers uh, can provide the customer what they need as well. Thank you. Mr. Bankston, um, in your written testimony, you talked about the President's Review Group. Um, can you characterize qu quickly for me what the President's Review Group is or was? The President's Review Group was a hand-picked panel of experts. And the can, you push, can you push the button, please? Uh, the Review Group was a panel of experts picked by the President, five of them, to review the NSA's intelligence activities, including a former CIA director and a former uh, cybersecurity Terrorism, anti-terrorism, sorry, of the White House, they concluded that the, uh, it should be the policy of the United States to promote rather than undermine the use of strong encryption. Yeah, and, um, and you, you highlighted recommend, recommendation 29, 29, and I would like to read that. And I do appreciate your, your, all of y'all's written testimony, but you had a lot of great information here. Um, and recommend, recommendation 29 that President Obama's uh, review group um, provided was that they recommend regarding encryption, the U.S. government should 
fully support and not undermine efforts to create encryption standards. Number two, not in any way subvert, undermine, weaken, or make vulnerable, generally available commercial software. And number three, increase the use of encryption and urge U.S. companies to do so in order to better protect data in transit, at rest, in the cloud, and other storage. I think that's a pretty good um, recommendation. And I'd like to, to close my, <coughs> my remarks with some of the, uh, a quote from uh, Mrs. Hess' written testimony. Following the rule of law and upholding civil liberties and civil rights are not burdens. They are what make all of us safer and stronger. Couldn't agree more with that. And again, you know, if when I, um, I started in the CIA in October of 2000, and on September 12th, I was the fourth employee in the unit that prosecuted the war in Afghanistan and helped infiltrate you know, um, Americans into Afghanistan to bring Al Qaeda and the Taliban to justice for their acts of terrorism on our, on our, on our shores. And if you would have asked me on September 13th whether or not um, that, if somebody would have told me on September 13th that it would be 14 years prior to attack um, having, happening on our homeland again, I would have said you were absolutely crazy. And the reason um, nothing has happened these last 14 years is because our men and women in the intelligence community, in law enforcement, um, acting as if it's September 12, 2001 every single day. Uh, the velocity that that requires, the, the dedication, the um, countless hours, the sacrifice is incredible, and I applaud everyone for that. But that's why I hold you, everyone in the law enforcement intelligence community, um, to a higher standard, and that upholding civil liberties and civil rights are not burdens. They are what make all of us safer and stronger. And I would recommend, this is a good conversation, but I would recommend that, or comment, that in any other future proposals or conversations that are going to come before this body will be carefully scrutinized um, by this committee, by many of our colleagues, because we can protect our country and our civil liberties at the exact same time, and that's what we must do. So I want to thank all of y'all for your time today um, and this conversation. Um, I think it's always helpful. Um, this has helped me better understand um, where um, my opinions on this topic, and I'd like to thank our witnesses for taking the time to appear before us today. There's no further business. Without objection, the subcommittee stands adjourned.